this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. How you doing over there, sister, with the sun? If you make some time, come check us out for a second, all right? Because we uh, want to give you some solutions according to the Bible on how we change in our community, right? And what we're doing for our people with the word of God, right? We're teaching that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. That we're not black, just a color in a crayon box, right? We're not, the, we're not called after the names of our oppressors, right? And if you can make some time for me, maybe just five minutes, see your time. Even for your son, right? How old is your son? He's six. This, this would be a good time for him to come see what we got over here, too, because we showing our people that Christ, guess what, is a black man. That's right. right. That he's made an image of God himself. That's right. You understand? These are the things that are very important. So come make some time for me, sister. I know you can. Come make some time for me. All right. So read that again. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. Okay. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Right, so the Lord has made these men that you see over here in purple and gold, we are made to be watchmen for our nation. Likewise with you other men. You right there too, brother, uh, with the hat on, with the shades. Yeah, you supposed to be a watchman for your people. Read that one more time for me. Listen closely. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Right, the Lord has made the prophets a watchman for the house of Israel. What does the watchman do? He look out for danger that's coming upon his people. Right, he warns his people about the judgment to come to this world. He warns the people about the sins that they're in. You understand? Because what happened with our older men in these last days? We say, all right, let everybody do what they're going to do, right? No longer do men have that zeal like they had with Ma uh, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King or the Black Panthers, right? Let's get that in Genesis 49 real quick. That was actually prophesied in the Bible that our men will, will lie down like old lions, right? Old lions don't have that ferocity that they used to have. So listen to this, read. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 9. Come on. Judah is a lion's whelp. The nation of Judah, right, the tribe of Judah, which is a so-called black man, is a lion's whelp. A, a young lion is fierce, read. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stood down, or he stooped down. He, he, couched, he, yeah, he couched as a lion. And as an old... Read it, read it from the top, just take your time. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, he who shall rise him up? Right, so who's going to rise up the man in these last days to stand up to this truth? So make sure you check out the flyer, sister. Make sure you check out the flyer. So who's going to rouse up the men to be watchmen? Right? It's going to take the spirit of the Lord. It's going to take the spirit of the Lord. So get that Ezekiel 317 one more time. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Right. We're here to give you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans warning. Warning that guess what? There's a judgment that's coming to this place that's never been heard of. It's called World War III. We're already dealing with uh, pestilence and th diseases and things like that. Come on, park for me, sis. Make some time, sis. Okay, okay, well look, I'll tell you what, make sure you follow up on the contact information on the back of that flyer, all right? On that flyer, you will find uh, 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 that we have a website, right, israelunite.org. We also have an app called IUIC TV that you can download, okay, on your Google Play or I I put Apple Play or whatever, okay? And there's more information about what we're doing and how we're reaching out to the community and what we're doing in our communities to change the minds of our people, okay? And you have to take a role in that as well. Right? Because you you are older sister and we need young sisters to look up to a right example. Because we got too many baby mamas at a young age out here. Okay? And the Bible in Titus 2 says that the aged women should teach the young women. Right? So let me let me just read this one scripture for you. Let's get that real quick. Let's get Titus 2 real quick. This is what we give to our sisters. This is a part of restoring the nation. Right? Putting us back in our right mindset. All right, so read that one more time in Titus. Read that in Titus. This All is right. the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. My check, my check. That, that the aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as be 
becometh holiness. So the Bible says that the aged women need to uh, be in behavior as to become holiness, right? What's good behavior for aged women? Do aged women go to the club? Hot girl summer, stuff check, like check, that? Check. No, that's not an aged woman behavior. But many of the aged women are like that, right? So read it again. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior uh -huh. as becometh holiness. Uh -huh. Not false accusers. Come on. Not given to much wine. Come on. Teachers of good things. Teachers of what? Teachers of good things. So the aged women should be teachers of good things. So real quick, we're going to show you what's good according to the Bible. Just real quick, go to Romans, hold that. We're going to show you what is the good thing that should be taught to the younger women. That should be taught to the young men. Okay, let's read that. Romans uh, 7 and 14. Come on, you got it. This is the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy and just and the commandment holy and just and good. You see what the, the Lord just called the commandments holy, just and good. So that's that good thing that the women are supposed to be teaching the youth. Okay, so go back to Titus. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. Uh, teachers of good things. See that? Teachers of the God's laws. Okay? And you as a sister, you should be wanting to teach God's laws. Okay? To these sisters, right? You have any daughters? You have daughters, right? Uh, you have one daughter? How old is she? 11? Right. That's a perfect That's a perfect age, right? Because she's very young in the mind still in her understanding. Right? You should be teaching her God's law. Like one of God's laws says that a woman should dress modestly. Okay? That she shouldn't be wearing leggings and and tight pants or pants in general she should be wearing a, a modest dress okay you should be teaching her those things that she should be covering herself right and you have to start by setting that example for her obviously or else then she'll look at you as a hypocrite okay so make sure that you you follow up on, on with us all right because this is very very important we need to restore the minds of our people Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 real quick. Romans 12 and 2. This is the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. So notice what this world teach. This world teach uh, homosexuality. It teach that it's okay uh, to be baby mamas. It's okay to do abortions. Okay, it's okay to be promiscuous, to sleep around. Right. Right. These are the things that this world teach, especially targeting the youth. You're familiar with Superman, right? Your son know about Superman? Guess what? There's a gay Superman coming for your son. Teach, uh -huh. What do you think that's going to teach your son? Bring it up. Right? It's going to teach him that that lifestyle is okay. They target the kids. It's called desensitizing. Okay? They push homosexuality often, especially targeting a young man. Okay? So these are the things that we're teaching our people not to be conformed to. Don't be used to this world because guess what? There's a better way of living, a better standard for our people. Read. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See that? It starts up here. It starts up here. We can come out here and give out free food. We can come out here and give all things free. But it will do nothing for the people if we don't start here. Who am I? Am I black? Am I African American? Those are the things that our oppressors called us. So we start here by learning God's word that we are the Israelites according to the Bible. You understand that, sister? So make sure you understand that and take it seriously. All right, finish that up. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See that, that perfect and acceptable will of God is God's laws. It's perfect. Uh, you, have, you go to church, sis? Okay, uh, in the church, do they teach much about God's laws? Like what? They teach the commandments at your church? 
also like uh, laws such as uh, the women mo have to wear a dress. Did you know that was in the Bible, that women shouldn't wear pants? Say it again. She should dress appropriately. Okay, so we'll, we'll just just get the law for you real quick. Go to 2 Timothy um, about modesty. Okay, because that's that's where it's supposed to come with. It's supposed to come with modesty. Okay, because in churches, a lot of times, it's like who dress better than who. A lot of times, the sisters come in with the tight dresses on where, you can, where they show the butt and everything like that. Right? That's what goes on in the churches sometimes, right? That's not modest. Okay, read. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So women must adorn themselves in modest apparel according to the dress code that God gave to his children. Okay, so now hold that. Go to Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. This is part of the dress code that was given to the sons and the daughters of Israel. Okay, read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right. According to the law, the woman is to not wear what pertains to a man, meaning men's clothes. Right. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And neither should a man dress like a woman or put on woman's clothes. Right. So it's very clear what that is telling us. Right. So now let's read that first part one more time. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now let's get the uh, the law for what pertains to men. Go to Exodus. This is what pertains to men. We're going to read it out of the Bible. Let's read that in Exodus uh, 28 and 42. All right. We're going to we're going to show you what pertains to men that the women are wearing today. Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 28 and verse 42. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. You ever heard of that term before, breeches? What's that? Huh? It's like pants, right? Right, it's a sudden, it's a sudden slant lingo. Britches, pull your britches up, right? So we see that God says that he should make them linen britches, right? Let's see who they're for, read. To cover their nakedness, from the loins even unto the thighs, they shall reach, and they shall be upon Aaron and his sons. So the breeches, the pants, were made for the sons of Israel. Okay, but in the last days, in, in, in modern society, they say that women can wear pants. Right. Okay, so the Bible says that the women should not be wearing pants because they were for the sons of Israel. The right. Okay, and now... Uh, women wearing leggings, right? Women wear leggings. Do you understand that that's a form of underwear, undergarment, right? So that, like the Native Americans, they wore that under their dresses, right? And if you look at our history, when our uh, foremothers were picking cotton in those plantations and things like that, in 90 degree weather, 99 degree weather, they was doing it in dresses because they understood that was their custom, that's their law. Okay, and we didn't stop, we came out of that, we came out, uh, the sisters started changing their dress code uh, following after uh, the, uh, the so-called white woman, Amelia uh, uh, Bloomer, Amelia. Uh, Amelia Bloomer, right, a Caucasian woman with the feminist movement, okay, anything a man can do, I can do, so the woman started putting on pants, and she convinced the black woman that you are oppressed at home too, come put these pants on with me, we can do better than men. So pants are, it was actually a part of the feminist movement, okay? So these are things that we have to come out of. Because guess what? Wearing pants, uh, you as a sister, if you're wearing pants, right? Uh, are you married, by the way? You married? So you got a husband. You wearing, If you were to wear pants and uh, you was walking down the street with your husband, and a brother said something inappropriate to you, like, damn, girl, boom, boom, boom. How would that make your husband feel? probably disrespected right right because guess what that man is less than after what he see because of the immodesty right so let's go back to the Timothy this is the book of first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9 bring it out in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety right not with braided hair or gold or 
pearls or a costly array. So it's not all about how you look with the hair, the nails, and the earrings and things like that, but it's more important that you adorn yourselves in modest apparel first and foremost. Because guess what? When a woman starts to dress modestly, guess what? It's easier to get, get respect. And it's easier to turn away adulterers and whoremongers that lust after women. Right. That don't want to do nothing but defile the woman and move on to the next. Teach. You know what I'm saying? And if our daughters are seeing that it's okay to dress in, in this modest apparel, they the cycle continues. Right. The cycle continues. Teach, you know huh? So it's very, very important that we start with uh, uh, God's laws. Come on! Go to uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 23 and verse 17. I believe. Bring it up. Let's see what the law says about uh, the whoredom of our people and how that has uh, how that is destroying us. Okay, is that what I want? Deuteronomy 23 17. Yep. Let's read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. God says there should be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Okay, a whore is considered, um, according to the Bible, a woman that is promiscuous. Okay, or a woman who who shows off her her pair her dresses. You know, back in the day, you could tell the difference between a prostitute and a woman who was not a prostitute. It's kind of all on the same playing ground now. Okay, so let's read that one more time. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Why there should be no whore of the daughters of Israel? Because you are the daughters of Sarah. That's, you that's are right. the princesses of God. You Jeez. blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You sisters, you are the princesses of God. Make sure y'all take a flyer. You are the Il Israelites, according to the Bible. That's right. So we should not uh, have our sisters out here in whore. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how we're men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth